and in this video we're going to look at electronegativity. Now electronegativity is a, is a very important foundation um, concept to get right, mainly because um, it, you need to know it to understand things like organic mechanisms uh, in AS and A2 chemistry and beyond as well. So it is very important that you need to know this um, and also um, especially for AS chemistry as well when you need to know the definition and you need to know kind of what the numbers mean as well in terms of it. So we're going to start with the definition for electronegativity and you can see on here that the definition is the ability or the power uh, of an atom to attract electrons towards itself in a covalent bond uh, and the two most crucial parts to this are the ability for an atom to attract electrons which is the first bit um, and uh, the covalent bond bit is also important as well and you get electronegativity in covalently bonded molecules um, and where you've got electronegativity you can also have a little bit of ionic character as well um, remember ionic character is where uh, an electron is actually taken from one atom and donated to another to create charges and um, this is kind of halfway to that um, except you don't create proper full charges but you do create small charges um, and that's what makes these molecules have some ionic character as well uh, and most uh, molecules in uh, chemistry actually have a bit of ionic and covalent character as well um, but some molecules for example H2 and Cl2 so ones where you've got two atoms that are the same actually have purely covalent uh, character um, and no ionic character mainly because there's no polarity there so there is um, uh, something called a Pauling scale and Pauling was a scientist who basically came up with numbers to say how powerful each atom was at attracting electrons towards itself when it's bonded with another atom covalently. So and he came up with this series of elements here and you can see that we have hydrogen at the top and we go down to fluorine at the bottom um, and fluorine having the biggest number um, and this means that fluorine is actually the most electronegative element which means it actually pulls electrons more readily towards itself. Now if you had to visualise this in a periodic table you would find that actually as the further right and up in the periodic table you go, um, the more electronegative the element is, um, if you exclude group 8 and, uh, or group 0, whatever you want to call it. So in this case, the furthest up and right is fluorine, and fluorine is classed as the most electronegative. And the further away you go from fluorine, either to the left or down, um, the less electronegative your element becomes. So we're going to look at this here, and we're going to uh, see what effect this actually electronegativity has because it plays a massive role in terms of how reactions proceed. So we're going to do, we're going to start with HCl. Now you can see here that H has an electronegativity of 2.1, uh, which means it's not that electronegative. When compared to chlorine, which has got an electronegative, electronegativity value of 3, um, which means that chlorine will actually pull electrons towards itself more than hydrogen will. And what that means is that you get like a polarity, you get a charge difference. Uh, and we can represent this by using these symbols here, which is delta positive and delta negative. So because chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen, it pulls electrons towards itself uh, and it forms what's called a delta negative um, charge on it. And obviously the hydrogen would form a delta positive charge because the electrons are being taken from it. Now, what this means is, actually in your electrons in this bond here are actually, the ones that have been shared between them, are actually being pulled slightly towards the chlorine side than the hydrogen side. And this polarity can actually give rise to further reactions. And you'll come across this so many times through our AS and A2 chemistry. Uh, and you'll see when you do mechanisms and other reactions, you'll see where this actually fits in. Well, if we do a different one, so if we do HF, which is hydrogen fluoride, um, again, fluorine is very electronegative. Um, it's very willing to um, accept the electrons or take the electrons when they're being shared. Um, so again, the polarity is there um, and fluorine would have this delta negative charge on it and hydrogen have the delta positive. And what you've got is um, the electrons being pushed more towards the fluorine side. Now, you need to be able to write down um, this polarity on here as well. Uh, and this is actually important when you do um, intermolecular forces, uh, when you do dipole-dipole um, interactions and um, van der Waals as well, and even hydrogen bonding. So all three uh, actually use this idea of electronegativity 
And if you want to see that video, uh, just click on the link just below uh, and you can see um, how electronegativity and polarity um, affects uh, as an intermolecular force. Now, there are a few exceptions um, where it gets a little bit different. So here are the exceptions here. So you might have something like carbon dioxide, where you can see that carbon's got the delta positive and your oxygens are delta negative because they're more electronegative compared to carbon. Uh, because this is actually a symmetrical molecule, um, these two negatives will actually cancel each other out. And overall, this molecule on the face of it might look polar, um, it actually isn't um, because of this, some, this symmetry here, and the two negatives will cancel each other out. So um, this is actually non-polar. Uh, and it's the same with this one here, which is NF3. Um, again, you've got very electronegative fluorines there, um, but you have a lone pair on that nitrogen. And that lone pair can actually balance out the negative charge on the bottom uh, and actually balance it out on the top as well. So because the actual, the, the, um, the actual electrons are spread out evenly across this whole molecule, NF3 is actually um, not very polar. And you can tell if something's polar. So for example, um, one of the key examples is water. Um, and water has obviously an oxygen, um, and it has the two lone pairs on the oxygen. You have a delta positive hydrogen and delta negative oxygen because the oxygen is more electronegative than your hydrogen. Uh, it's further over to the right on the periodic table. And actually, um, if you um, run a tap really, really, really smoothly um, and just like a trickle of water coming out of the tap, uh, and if you, if you take like an acetate rod and rub it to give it a charge, if you put that rod near the stream of water, then what you should find is actually the water should start and bend uh, around that rod. Um, because if your rod is charged and your um, water is actually charged, it's got a polarity, then actually the water is affected by any charged um, object that's placed near it. So you can try that um, if you've got a duster and a bit of plastic, though especially Perspex, which would be very good for that. So um, this is electronegativity. Um, you need to know the little symbols, like delta positive and delta negative. The definition is crucial. Uh, and if you understand this concept, then it will help you massively um, for later ideas in AS and A2 chemistry as well. And if you want to go and do a degree in chemistry, then that would help as well. But um, that's it. Bye.